Our entire religion, our deen is based upon history. What we're going to see today is absolutely mind-blowing. Most Muslims are not aware of this history. They haven't been exposed to it before because they have no interest in it. Okay. You know the royal mint? The only mint I know is Tic Tacs. Okay, okay. Not that mint. Yeah, right it's, it's like a weed that grows on nice. River Nile. Okay. <laughs> Musa needs to be solid as man. <laughs> Oh, that's a Jannah. <laughs> Asalaamu Alaikum guys and welcome to a very special episode of Smile to Jannah where I'm joined finally, historically, contemporarily with the main individual that you guys have seen on Speaker's Corner it is Ustad Adnan Rashid Asalaamu Alaikum Wa Alaikum Asalaam Finally, Jazakallahu Khair for joining us on this amazing episode that's going to take us on a journey absolutely a very special journey there are certain collections and certain points that i think will be very beneficial for your iman for your faith and also in terms of if some of you want to pursue this in further studying as well ustad has studied uh, a master you got a master's in history yes. in history yes Subhanallah, hmm. Subhanallah. Anything that you specialized in? Yes, medieval history medieval. and Islamic history. Yes, uh, uh, my dissertation was on the history of the Crusades. Subhanallah, history Crusades, of the Crusades. Yeah. Yeah, Salahuddin right. and Sultan Salahuddin and Richard and the Coward. Actually, I studied Richard the Coward and uh, <laughs> some of the deeds he did in the Middle East. But that's another history. We can talk about it another time, inshallah. But, but Ustad, I mean, history is a bit boring. I mean, why and how is it something that's motivated you and why should we bother just staying on the video? Like, why? History is very, very interesting. It is very powerful. <coughs> In particular for the Muslims, history is everything. Our entire religion, our deen is based upon history. Okay? The Quran tells us the history of prophets. The prophet's history itself is uh, a source of inspiration for us. The sunnah is history. The sunnah means the way of the prophet. The way of the Prophet is historic in mm. nature. We have to study the history of the Prophet ﷺ to follow him. So history is absolutely necessary it's for Muslims in particular. Yes. And and we're going to be dealing with silver coins, gold coins, yes. stuff that is valued at thousands of pounds, but because people are juhal, they're ignorant, mm. they don't appreciate these manuscripts that you're going to be showing us today. So not is only is it valuable in terms of... Uh, it's it's actually I mean the, the stuff that it can the intrinsic get, value the intrinsic I value. mean there is metal value yes for silver and gold but then at the same time there is historic value uh, and that can run into thousands of pounds uh, sometimes even into millions of pounds depending on what you have and we're not looking at anything like that today what we're gonna see today is absolutely mind-blowing most Muslims are not aware of this history they haven't been exposed to it before because they have no interest, unfortunately. This tissue looks looks very nice. It has a very special design on it. Will we be serving something on here? Absolutely. Or? So let me tell everyone why I have these gloves and why, why I'm, I'm going to put them on. There's not going to be any murder scene here. What is the history of Islamic coinage? How did the coins evolve? So what coins were the Prophet Sallallahu and his companions using is the question now. And that Why? Time, what's, what's the point of knowing that? How is that going to be significant? Because dirham and dinar is very important in our history, in our theology. The term dirham has been used in the Quran. The term dinar and dirham both have been used in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Why these coins are important, to put it in simple terms, we can know that these persons existed. Their names are true. The chronology, the dating, it's correct, right. right? The calendar, for example, and the individuals who minted these coins or the dynasties that minted these coins or the names that can be found on these coins give us a lot of history. Okay, The silver quantity or the gold quantity in a given coin can show you how prosperous those people were. When gold quantity is pure, when silver quantity is pure, then that means this was a very prosperous civilization. Ching -ching. Or a pros yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now let's get to the coins. Okay, the first coin we are looking you at. You know what I'm really interested in? It's these, what century are these hairs uh, dated at? Okay, these hairs are not supposed to oh. be here, okay? Okay. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think these are, these are Musa's hair. <laughs> okay, so the first coin we are looking at is from the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The dirham the Prophet would have used himself no or his companions would have used this is a this is a drum or dirham of the persian emperor 
Khusro the second who was a contemporary of the Prophet sallallahu you can see his bust very clearly on What's the coins. Bust? The bust means his, his image or his uh, his basically likeness. Okay, so that's his image. Th this coin has been struck by a die. Okay, so the coin, the silver piece would be warmed for it to become soft and then it would be placed in between two dies and it would be hammered. So this inscription would become uh, part of the coin. So here you have the image of the emperor. You can see the beard, you can see the moustache, you can see the nose and the eyes and the throne. By the way, from these coins you get to know that the moon and the star are actually way. Sassanid symbols. The crescent and the star was actually introduced by the Ottomans. Mm. It's not an Islamic symbol. On the back of these coins you had uh, the fire altar in the middle and two attendants on the side. And wow. then in, in the Persian, the ancient Persian Pahlavi text, you have the mint name and you have the year inscribed. Okay, when you say mint was minted for the people that the don't city, know. The city, the city where the coin was struck. Where That's, it was made. Yeah, it's called the mint. Okay. You know the royal mint? The only mint I know is Tic Tacs. Okay, okay. Not that mint. <laughs> this mint means where the coins were made, they were, where they were struck. So now moving on. So what is a dinar? What is a dinar at the time of the Prophet Dinar yeah. was a gold coin. Okay. Uh, okay. Which was minted by the Byzantines or the Romans. Okay. So the dirham was uh, Persian. Dinar was Roman. The Byzantines, the Romans called it solidus. The Muslims referred to it or the Arabs referred to it as the dinar. Uh, and if you look at the Roman currency, the denominations denarius was a silver coin. But the Arabs used the term dinar to refer to a gold solidus, which is what you see in my hand right now. Right. So you see the emperor here solidus, holding, yeah. holding a globe, holding that one of those uh, round things with the cross on it. Right. So y this is a Byzantine solidus from the time of the Sahaba, from the time of Uthman bin Affan radiallahu anh, he was a contemporary. So this is the currency that was used as dinar by the Arabs and by early Muslims. Early Muslims, I mean the Prophet and his companions. So you can see the cross there on steps, right? So we know from history in the years 636 and 637 CE, the Muslims took much territory in Persia as well as the Roman territory, Byzantine territory, Syria, current day Syria and parts of Egypt. So what did the Muslims do when they come in? Did they use the same currency? Initially, yes, they were using the same currency. Then what the Muslims did, early Muslims, the Sahaba, they were pragmatic about uh, economic conditions of these lands. They didn't want to introduce something new that the people find it difficult to deal with. Right. Mm -hmm. So instead of changing the currency straight away, the Muslims kept the same currency for a while. And later on, they started to mint the same coins, early Muslims with Bismillah on them to denote that these are Islamic issues. These issues are not Persian Sassanid issues. Rather, these issues are minted by Muslims. So you can see there, the coin looks very similar to the Persian Sassanid coin. Uh, Sassanid coin. Now, uh, this one, this one is a Persian Sassanid official issue. That one is a Muslim issue. How do we know that? You have Bismillah and Rabbi inscribed. Mm in the margins. So you have Bismillah in the name of Allah, Rabbi. There's a okay. moon and a star there. Yeah, it? yeah, absolutely. So they, 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 they kept the Ottomans. They, yeah, yeah. The, the Ottomans, in, in, Ottomans introduced it later. Okay. okay. It was not an Islamic symbol. The Ottomans, for some reason, used the crescent and the star as a symbol later on on the flags and things like that. Right. And then many countries adopted the symbol and people think it's an Islamic symbol. It's not necessarily an Islamic symbol, the crescent and the star. Okay. okay. So, so this one, no, this don't, one. Don't think that's a good idea. Uh, no, that's why it's in a box. Thank area. God, it's solidus. If it was yeah. liquidus, yeah. <laughs> it would become gaseous. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Absolutely. So here we have an example of an early Islamic coin. When I say an early Islamic coin, it is proto-Islamic on its way. The currency is on its way to become fully Islamic. It is not yet fully Islamic. Okay. So what were the fully Islamic coins after the coinage was fully completely reformed? Yes. So Abdul Malik bin Marwan, the Umayyad Caliph, who ruled from Allah, what was his uh, from uh, 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 65, uh, Hijri, 65 Hijri, 65 Hijri yeah. to 86. 86. Yeah. Ah, okay, Rishan is trying. <laughs> is trying. He's trying his best. Abdul Malik bin Marwan was the caliph for nearly 20 years, and he was using these gold Byzantine or Roman solidus to deal with the Romans. 
So Muslims were selling papyri from Egypt. The Romans were using it as paper. So what Muslims started to do, they started to put Islamic formulas on the papyri. And the Romans so were not... So papyri, for the people that don't know... It. So papyri is a plant that grows on River Nile. Yeah. Okay, And they used it uh, to make paper. What Muslims started to do, the letterhead, they started to put the letterhead as Muhammad Rasulullah. But or papyrus something like comes that. from a type of flower, yeah? You just spread it's that not, out. Yeah, it's it's it. like a weed that grows on nice. river Nile, okay, uh, not that weed, oh. okay, not that weed. <laughs> so Muslims started to sell this papaya to Byzantines and they were putting Islamic formulas on the paper, so the Byzantines were not happy. So the emperor threatened Abdul Malik bin Marwan that if you will not stop putting Islamic formulas on this paper you send us, we will start putting insults on our solidus, the coins we send you in return mm. for these papers. Wow. So therefore, stop this or we're going to start putting insults against your prophet on our coinage. So Abdul Malik bin Marwan realized that we can no longer rely on Roman currency. Okay, so we have to now start thinking of initiating our own Islamic currency. That's when he was advised, according to some reports by Hajjaj bin Yusuf or Yazid bin Muawiyah. And sick. this is one of the earliest Islamic coins on my hand from that reformed coinage issued by Abdul Malik bin Marwan. One second. Musa needs to be solid as man. <laughs> Basically, this is the second year uh, when these dinars were minted by Abdul Malik bin Marwan. So the first dinar was minted in 77. This is from the uh, this is from the next year, from 78. And the date is actually inscribed on the coin. So Bismillah, it reads Bismillah. Doreba has a dinar fi sana thaman wasabain. Okay, in the name of Allah, this dinar was struck in the year 78. Then in the middle you see Allahu Ahad, Allahu Samad, Lam Yalid wa Lam Yulad. Surah Ikhlas, from the first century of Islam, on the coinage of the Muslims. The, the Byzantine solidus became the dinar, the Islamic dinar. So when we look at the other side now, uh, the obvious side of the coin, it has La in the middle now. La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. That's amazing. The Islamic creed. If you go anti-clockwise again, it says Muhammad Rasulullah arsalahu bil huda wa deen al haq li yudhira wa al-deen kulli. Why were they using these particular, these specific formulas? Why Surah Ikhlas? Why la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah? Scholars actually assert that because the solidus had Christian formulas on it, there was a cross carried by the emperor. Very Christian imagery was on Solidus. So to counter that, Abdul Malik bin Marwan and his advisors, they came up with this idea to condemn the shirk of Trinity, mm. the shirk of the Trinity, to condemn or to criticize or to counter it. Wow. We will put Tawheed. We will put the oneness of Allah on the early Islamic coins. So this is now a silver dirham again minted by Abdul Malik bin Marwan. So Abdul Malik bin Marwan replaced the Sassanid dram or dirham with the Islamic dirham which was slightly less in weight. Okay. Again with Islamic formulas. La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la in the middle. Then we have Bismillah. Doreba has a dirham bil basra. In the name of Allah, this dirham was minted in Basra in the year 81 Hijri. In the year 81 Hijri. So this is a very early Islamic silver dirham. On the other side, you have similarly, Allahu Ahad, Allahu Samad, Lam Yalid, Lam Yulad, Wa Lam Yakun Lahu Kufuwan Ahad. Again, the same verse from Surah Tawbah, Muhammad Rasulullah, Salahu Bil Hudawa, Deen Al Haq. Oh my good Lord. Okay, so it's there. And then in copper, we had the false or fils. It looks okay. false. Uh, uh, no, it looks no. real. It's not false. Okay. It's a very simple coin because it's copper. So it was the lowest denomination. So the lowest denomination was false or fils. And then the one above that was silver dirham. And the one above that was the gold dinar, as you have seen. Right. So what does it say here? La ilaha illallah wahda. Okay. So this is again Aqeedah. On the other side, we have mm. Muhammad Rasulullah. Muhammad Rasulullah. So mm. this coin is again an Umayyad coin from the first century. So the Aqeedah of the Muslims is well established by 
the mid not that it wasn't established earlier i'm talking about when we can see physical evidence of the muslim belief on objects like coins we have manuscripts of the quran from the first century we have inscriptions on rocks uh, near the city of mecca where entire surahs have been inscribed by the companions of the prophet mm -hmm. so when we talk about physical evidence of islamic creed islamic belief we have plenty of evidence from the mid first century of Islam, the first 50 years, right? So, of course, we have traces going back to the Prophet the Hadith, the Isnad, the chain of Hadith that goes back to the Prophet but the physical evidence we have from nearly 50 Hijri onwards, we have plenty of physical evidence. Oh, 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 so, even when you are using currency, you are being reminded that you have to earn halal. Allah. You have to keep in mind that this is noble currency with Allah's name on it. Mm. You cannot use it for any wrongdoing. Mm. You cannot cheat people. You cannot lie on this currency. So this is like a reminder for the Muslims as well. Not only a response to disbelievers, but even a reminder to the Muslims Allah. that you must use this currency correctly because it belongs to Allah. It's an amana in your hand and be reminded always that Allah is the one who is the real owner of this wealth, not you. You are simply uh, carriers, guardians of this currency. And uh, yeah, so inshallah, they can follow your channel. Inshallah, absolutely. What's your channel called? Adnan Rashid. Adnan Rashid. Yes. So inshallah, subscribe. Don't subscribe to these people that are just wasting people's time. Uh, like Zishan. <laughs> yeah, we're Smile to Jannah. <laughs> your content's on there as well now. <laughs> yes. So I will have to praise it. It's a good channel. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, watch the content on it. Absolutely. On a serious note, Vishan's content is absolutely amazing. I watch it for some, sometimes for enjoyment, sometimes even for information. So information that's coming through with, uh, with, with a bit of humor, absolutely amazing. You know, it really sticks. Let's yeah. leave it there. Hmm. Until next time. Assalamu alaikum.